Uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, you beautiful, beautiful people. Good afternoon. Do you hear a change in my mood, my mood? This is natural. Uh, it's nothing forced. It's it's just it's me. Such a such a difference when you're not doing anything under duress, stress, or pressure. What a difference. Today is Sunday, November the 4th, the year 2022. Right now it's 151. I used to think a lot. I see it in the news. You know why I talk about certain, not all of them, but just certain celebrities and and and, and entertainers and what they're going through. Because they're they're in the not just because they're in the public light. I want you to take a look at their status. Their, their status, most of them, they're multi-millionaires many times over. Some of them are even billionaires. But I, I, I like to do an in-depth diagnosis of, of, of certain people's situation and what they're going through because on a microcosm level, which would be my level, our level. <laughs> we're not up there, but we're all, we have all experienced and we have all gone through something similar. I point that out to point out that we must always keep in mind that before anything else that these celebrities and these quote-unquote idols, they're mere, mere human beings with a lot of money. Well, then they say money isn't real in this society if it's not backed by gold or silver. So if money isn't real, we have these human beings on such a high pedestal because of the so-called paper money that they have, all those digits next to their names. If that isn't real, then what makes you worship them so much? It's all perception, you understand. We all used to look at Johnny Depp and as a Caribbean of the seas, and well, that's a voyage, but that's, I'd always like to watch it, and you, be, you become fans of these celebrities, you even uh, go so far as to say you worship them like gods, celebrities, athletes, entertainers, you understand. So then you, I, I started looking at you and analyzing. I was like, how, how is it that you could be so high and do all of that, have all of that luxury, that money? But are going through the exact same thing 
that we we made paupers <laughs> down here if we're going on a, a status level in this in this materialistic world how is that possible why are you getting a divorce why can't you have so much money why aren't you happy you're supposed to be happy i can tell you right now that the situation that many of us are in, myself included, if I had six, seven digits to my name, a lot of those problems would be alleviated, including problems of the heart. I would not be tolerating, I would not tolerate someone making me unhappy when I have so much money. So I see Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. And other black celebrities. I said how I started to do an in-depth as well. But then I went to the root of the problem, right? Divorce. What is it really? And why are these women? It's usually in a divorce, it's the women, right? Kanye West. Kim. Usually it's always the women that comes out. And they have nothing but venom and vitriol for a man they once held in such high regard. I was just like, but I saw your pictures, your wedding. I saw a picture of you guys way back when, when you guys were so lovey-dovey. Wow. Can you get from point A to point B with such drastic, conflicting emotions that sometimes it goes to even the dumb right hatred? I watch Discovery ID. It sometimes goes so far down. Uh, you get murderous intent. Sometimes even murder. Oh, sure. began to wonder how can two loving people sink so low and it is low and even when one party tries to be a class act and this is low now even when she's ripping him apart in the tabloids in the media he still stands his ground. He says nothing but good things about her. She's my best friend. I wish her nothing but the best. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. You yeah, know, I rock along those lines and I'm just like, wow. All whiles, all the while, while he is a 
saying these positive things about her. She, on the other hand, just saying the most. They're doing the most, you know. They all are. You, you heard Amber on the understand. You hear Angelina Jolie. Oh, Brad. He shook me. He shook me violently in he. He slammed me into the plane seat. It's just like, um, and right away, when she said that, I, I was picturing her. She slammed her into the, the seats of the plane. And automatically, I thought, were you guys flying commercial or was this a private jet? Was this a because I'm thinking to myself, did he do this in front of everybody on a commercial plane? Were you guys flying floor class, floor class, first class, or was it economy, or was it a private jet? I need some context and and and. and, and, and what led up to that if he if 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 he really did do that <clears throat> there is a war against heterosexual men in this country see it when i look at these women see these women lambasting these men, their husbands. Someone that they would have given anything, and I mean anything, to be with in the first country. When I look at these and I see the things that they're saying. It's always about violence, right? Because why? They're trying to invoke the sympathy of the public. I have questions though, for these women. I, I said, ma'am, you know, we're, we're, you know we're, this is not back in the 50s and the 60s where you don't have any rights for these. You understand what I'm saying? We're talking about um, 20, 22, 21, 19. What would this be? The 21st century, right? Wouldn't it? What are some questions I would ask these women? I said, ma'am, I would ask this of Angelina Jolie. I said, Miss Jolie, when Brad, your husband at the time, did this to you, can you please tell me Was this an everyday occurrence? Would he snatch you and shake you violently every day? Do you have documentation? Have you ever made a police report? Was it only you that he did this to or did he, is he, a general, generally a violent man. Did you see any of this when you were courting, dating, or when you're still legal? Doesn't matter, but did you see any of these red flags before? What was it about um, this man that made you want to 
marry him. Take him for better or for worse. That you now are ripping him apart in the meantime. After that incident, before I get to that question, because I got questions for these women, you know, these wives of these billionaires and multimillionaires and these well-to-do men that gave them a status and gave them a name. Well, uh, to, to be, to be, to be sure, to be honest, uh, she was already a name before she married Brad Pitt, but wasn't she more so afterwards? Brad Pitt was every woman's dream. Not mine, but I'm saying in space out there. He's so dreamy. Brad Pitt was every woman's rock Hudson. Clark Gable. She can look at the world and say, I got him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, me. You had him. You had him. And you know what? You lost him. Yes, Amber heard it. You lost that. Yes, Kim, you lost that. You know, when I look at these women, I feel so sorry for them. Yes, Jennifer, you have no idea how sorry I feel for you. Because I'll tell you something. Hmm. And what women don't realize and understand? If you can keep a marriage together, do so, especially with a high profile man. These men are under extreme pressure and stress. They are. So sometimes, of course, that's going to spill over when they come home to their abode, to their sanctuary. Instead of these women trying to alleviate the pressure, and their mistake is adding to it. If you want to divorce a man who has millions and millions of dollars, He's a good father, he's a good husband, but he just can't seem to keep his pecker in his pants. If you're going to divorce him for that, let it be for that. I wouldn't. Me, personally, I would. No. <laughs> I wouldn't. You make me happy? You're a good father to the kids? You're not abusive, but you cheat. Do you know how many women out there are with Ray Ray and Boo Boo and Pookie? They're with them. Those Pookies and Ray Rays and Jetros. They're cheating on the, the, the women still staying with them. 
but cheerful and poking your baby they got two two red cents to rub together but they're really good on xbox Do you know that if every woman divorced because of cheating, there would be no marriages in Africa? I always say it's not a it's not what a man does, it's how he does it. Now, if you're going to cheat on me, please don't do it with the next door neighbor. Don't do it with one of my girlfriends. Don't do it with any of my family members. Don't do it with anyone I know. That is why there are business trips. Yeah, that's right. I prefer you to take a plane and, and, and go. Yeah. Thank you. That's respect. That is respect. Take a plane. You should not be able to cheat on me in walking distance. You're going to have to drive miles, maybe fill up your tank two or three times. Take a plane. Take a bus. Shouldn't be. Try to be covert these times. I'm getting somewhere. You know me. I like this scenic route. Let's let's walk. No, I wouldn't. Do you know that there are men lining up to be with these women and they don't even know? You see, what I've come to realize is that In a divorce, the woman always comes out the loser. Hear me, please hear me when I say this. The woman always comes out the loser. She may have come out the winner. In materialistic manner and ways. But it is devastating. Devastating. To a woman. When she is divorced. Emotionally. Status wise. Can't even, it does something to a woman. I, I'm trying to embody it because I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be in the, in, in the shoes of a woman that, that why, why they have to act this way. It, their lives will never be the same. They have to pick up the pieces. They may have millions of dollars. It means nothing. But those millions of dollars is not going to help her pick up the pieces. Emotionally, she might be able to go buy that stuff and that stuff and that stuff. But the entity, that man, isn't there. Look at Wendy Williams. You might say, oh, well, he's a bad man and he's a... True. He 
he was there with God for the last 20 years and when he was no longer there and when the marriage dissolved no matter so really and truly what did that man really bring to the relationship we have to understand about something let me tell you something about men <sighs> Because there's a war against them right now. You always see them in the paper. White, black, Spanish, it don't matter. But there is a war against the family man. And I am here to tell you that men, you know, the one that God created, and yeah, 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 yeah. Men have many flaws. Oh God, they are so far from perfect. They are. They are. But I'm here to tell you that within those imperfections and in, within those flaws, in every imperfect man, there is something you can glean positively, that would positively reflect, that would impact a woman's life in ways that In ways only a woman, only a wife can explain. Let Wendy tell it. What was his name? Kevin? Kelvin? What? I know he was a rogue and I know he was. But what did he bring to the relationship to the what what or what is it you would honestly say that you are missing from him right now? What is that variable that that man added to your life? That would enable you to make you think that you can do it. What was it about that man that added to your life that you didn't have to worry about your next meal, a roof over your head, clothes on your children's back, food in your children's mouth? What was it? He was all bad, was he? There was nothing good about your husband. Hmm? Nothing. He was a cad. He was a bum. He was a loser. He was oh so, so terrible. You picked him. If he was so terrible, why'd you marry him? Why'd you marry him, man? Really? Did you see none of this? He, he's, he's just totally 100% horrible. There's nothing good about him. Oh, there is, but I don't, I don't see it. I don't tell you talking about that. Oh, that's right. You have to, it's the perception. You have to give out the perception of this man being so horrible, so you can gain our sympathy. You want me to have sympathy for a woman who's going to walk away with millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions. Mi no. Yeah. 
think I'll reserve my sympathy for hunger. People that can't get up. That they're immobile, prostrate in a hospital bed or, or a nursing home. I'll reserve my, my sympathy for children right now that are being trafficked. That are wondering, is there no one to save me? I, I, I think I'll reserve my sympathy for, for the people in Pakistan. That don't have a home right now. I, I, I think, I think, I think that I'm going to reserve my sympathy for the thousands of Mississippians who in America don't have clean drinking water today. No, man. I have sympathy for you. Go. Go and collect your millions. It's on a monopoly board, you see. Go collect property, teas, collect your money. But you know, the monopoly money, just like in real life, you know, it isn't real. It's just paper. I began to look into the word divorce. And I looked I must say this before I, I talk about divorce and why it's So tumultuous. You know, every event that a woman brings up, you must ask them. So after he did that, ma'am, how long after did you file for divorce proceedings? I can tell you nine out of ten times. The woman would not bring up certain things and she would only bring up certain things after after the man is the one who comes forth force who comes forth first to dissolve the marriage mm -hmm. Or until that woman reaches a precipice, that, that point where she says, I've done my time. Jennifer Falcon can look back and say, I've done 25 years. It's, I hung in there. I hung in there. She did. Yes, ma'am, you did. I give you props for that. You said he was a cheater. Now, let me ask you a question, Jennifer. This, these cheating episodes, did you, leave him, did you leave him right away? When you found out, when you had tangible evidence that uh, Stallone was cheating on you, did you leave him right away? Why not? Because now you're bringing up, that's why you're leaving him because he was a cheater, but you didn't leave. And when why? Okay, you didn't have you didn't have enough equity. Okay. 
right? So you stayed with him even though you knew he was cheating on you. And you're bringing it up now, why? You went to bed with him after you found out that. You I mean, you guys have made love since then, right? I mean, it wasn't anything forced. You wasn't under duress. You, you, did you confront him about it? And were, were, were there amends made? He said he wasn't going to do it again. Maybe he did it again, but you still forgave him. Why? Why didn't you leave him then? Oh, okay, the, the lifestyle. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, no, I was just checking. It's the lifestyle, isn't it? This man, this man, this man bathed you in the lap of luxury, you and the children that you have. He took care of you, didn't he? The children, you, you won't want to give that up just because of a little indiscrepancy <laughs> Uh, yes, that's true. That's true. But, but now, now, you want the public sympathy. You can get theirs, but you won't get mine. For I know he's worth $450 million. That's mm, half a billion, isn't it? Oh. Billion. You want me? To have sympathy for you when you're going to walk away with I can't even count that high. Is that seven digits? Eight? Nine? Yeah. Mm. Careful, ladies. Your your mask is slipping. Your greed is starting to show. It's okay to have greed, but don't let it be so obvious. You ever see married couples? Have the honeymoon. Oh, look at them. They're so happy. Y'all are so happy. You're so happy right now. Or in the beginning stages of the marriage. And you're the envy of your friends, your family. You post it on social media. You're the envy of strangers. Be like, oh, look. I wish I had that. And everyone comes together. I realize how deep marriage is. Marriage is very, very deep. Because when a woman 
marries a man and a man marries a woman. They're just not marrying each other. You're marrying each other's families. This is not a thing where it's just me and you go, me and you alone going for a stroll. Oh no. This is layers. This is one family, one background coming together with a family of a whole nother background. But they are forced to come together because of one member in their family. No, I call that under duress. Do you understand? Ah, what do I mean? Hit them where it hurts, CC. Hit them. Yes, my Lord, I will. If you're my brother and you're getting married, even if I may not care for your wife, let's go a different route. This would be more along the truth. If you're my sister, you've gotten married to a man that is not to my liking too much as far as can be very, maybe he's very controlling, manipulative, you understand. But because you are my sister and I love you very much, I would give him deference. You understand me? What people don't understand and realize is that because of the partner that your sibling chose, you have no choice but to be placating. You have no choice to give them a seat at the family dinner table. You have no choice. That is under duress. You must respect the spouse that your ch- that your sibling. Your child chooses. You must. It is just what is done. You must support. That union. Outwardly. Say what I want to say on the inside. But outwardly. Marriage is a very deep thing, and I say that to say this, you must be very, 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 very careful who you marry and who you bring into the family. Because I have seen 
some families torn asunder, torn apart by the partner a family member chooses to marry. Because what happens then? What happens? It's very hard, right? She's in the family for 25 years. Stallone has brothers and sisters, I presume. Because of who he is, what happens now? Because you get a divorce, is all of a sudden. Should you stop talking to the ex-wife? When my ex and me are no longer together, when, do you know that my brother still talks to her? My little brother still talks to my ex. They still. Do you understand how deep it is? And that's the thing, right? What, what are the protocols? If you get a divorce, but the person that you were married to, we weren't married to them, but we liked them. They were part of the family. They, they kind of still on with, you know, where you brought them around all the time. What, what do you want us to do now? Because you get a divorce, we have to stop talking to them? I have to stop talking to my sister-in-law? I have to stop talking to my brother-in-law. Do you see how devastating it is? You can't let your brother or your sister or your or your child know that you're still talking to their ex. They will get furious. Because in their mind, <clears throat> they think that I divorced them you should too. And that brings me to the crux of my argument. I devise that one of the reasons a divorce is so painful And a sin is that two couples, they go before God in a church. They take vows. You know the vow. Sometimes. They even make up their very own. Even if it's not a big ceremony, one thing that these marriages always take presence of, they always take presence in the atmosphere of God. What do I mean? It's usually in a church setting. Even in Vegas, if you do a quick wedding, it's held in a chapel. Even if you have it on the ocean side, on the beach, It's a pastor, it's a man or a woman of the cloth that brings you two together. And nine out of ten times, there's always loved ones there, loved ones, people that you, you, you hold close to your heart, people that you regard highly and very, it's, it's a celebration of just not two entities, but families joining together as one. And 
as a celebration. People are, are smiling and laughing and crying out of joy for you. And when it goes south, like some do, No one can be seen. That is what I can say. Yes. Huh. Are you really? No. Are you really? Why is it that you two can come together in the eyes of God but go your separate ways? In the eyes of the way you started shouldn't it end that way. The way you started your marriage shouldn't it have ended that way? Shouldn't it have been? In the presence of God. You took your vows. In the presence of him. Shouldn't you disavow. In his presence also. The vows that you gave one another. On that day. Shouldn't there be a day when you're going your separate ways. That you and who all was there come together. And speak why you're going your separate ways. So often you see and you find that the vows that were taken were in the presence of God. But then the Parting of the ways, or in a room with men in suits around the table, and they're sitting across from each other. Trying to see how you can hurt. You were married and you came together in the presence of God, but you divorced in the presence of man. And I am here to tell you that maybe we've been doing it wrong a long time. Just maybe. Does it matter? Why you go separate ways? You can tell me that we're when we're in the presence, looking in each other's eyes. Remember, <laughs> we we were looking in each other's eyes when when we said our vows to one another, and you you put that ring on my finger. And I put one on yours. 
they should do the same thing on a divorce. I want you to look me in the eye. And I want to, I want you to tell me why you mean. What did I do wrong? What vows I didn't uphold to you? And then I would offer you my hand with the ring that you put on my finger, the bond. And I want you to to reverse that motion. Those years before that you put it on my finger, I want you to take that ring off with everyone to see. Our loved ones and our families in the presence of the very same pastor is available or man of the cloth in every thinking and every thought. We owe it to each other to to our families, our friends, and our loved ones. But if it wasn't for us, if it wasn't for you, man, sir, your families, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your uncles, your mother, your father, your grandparents, they would have never known this person. They would have never fell in love with this person. Now you they would have never hated this person. They would have so let's let's do this in the eyes of God, shall we? Just like we started. Let us end. We don't want to be with me anymore. After all, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. But I think that the reason that it hurts so much is because it feels raw. And it's like a limb that was cut off and it was not cauterized. It's still... still bleeding and seeping fluids and oftentimes it gets infected and then there's pus and then there's oozing and it starts to smell. Divorce can get really stinking really bad. Pain that stays with you for a very, very long time, if not forever. It's like an amputee whose limbs aren't there anymore, but it feels like it. It's really over, but you still feel like there's a limb there to stand on. And 
I'm going to end my podcast now. I hear the noise upstairs, the banging and the pounding. <laughs> One of these days I will have to go through that. Uh, when it's like that, they can hear everything that I'm saying on my phone. So, I will end it here. As usual, it's been lovely. Um, yeah. I was just, you know, just one of the things that goes through my head. Maybe we've been doing it all wrong. You know? Maybe it was less traumatizing to both people, both parties, families. Maybe it wouldn't get so ugly. Just a thought. Okay. Um, love you. Love you, pastors. Love you. Um, I love you, family. Love you, good, good people. Now, I am going to circumvent the devil once again. I can hear the pounding, so they know where I'm at. <laughs> All right. Take care. Virtual hugs. Take care of those around you and love them, okay? And be neighborly to your neighbor. Take care. Love you.